Hey, hey, hey there, folks. Jim Pesky here with another audio commentary. And uh, actually, it's been a very long time since I've done one of these. So uh, very, um, I'm very sorry, actually, to all of you that it's taken me so long to actually get back to doing these. Um, to make it up to you, I might actually upload this in a slightly uh, higher quality, higher definition than we normally get. Uh, it, it takes absolutely ages to upload, but uh, and it just destroys my internet connection for all my um, all my housemates. So uh, they aren't too pleased with that when it happens. But uh, I might start doing that from now on. Uh, we'll have to see how things, um, whether or not it, it just uh, takes too long to upload on my part. Really, that's the only reason I haven't done it before now is uh, just it just absolutely wreck my internet connection for ages because I'm on a wireless internet connection as well. So um, it isn't particularly fast in terms of upload speeds, and so it uh, looks like we're going to be seeing a game between Ted and Fly. Is it Violet? Sorry, Ted and Violet. Uh, obviously, um, two really, really good players. Uh, I think actually it's going to be on Twisted Meadows, and uh, this is actually p probably quite an unpopular statement. But I think actually uh, Undead vs. Zork is less certainly it's less imbalanced than it used to be. I think it isn't perfectly balanced yet, but I think. Uh, players like Ted have really come up with good ways of um, forcing it themselves into, uh, basically forcing themselves into the late game. Uh, at which point, I think it's a very, um, it's actually a decently balanced matchup. It's just the problem is that really in the early game, there's so many different perils. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can lose, and uh, as as undead, and there's not really too many ways you can win, where or um, get a huge advantage. Whereas if you can make it to that late game, then you're really in a very strong position. Uh, looks like unfortunately no observers in this game, so we're gonna be have to be on um, let's go on Violet's point of view, and uh, you know we are seeing standard openings from both players. It looks like late fiends coming from Ted, so he will he will get out uh, three goals by looks things, maybe four. He wants to go for Banshee Slater, which he's very much a proponent of on this map. He really likes Banshee play, and it looks like um, both players actually scattered the wrong way, and uh, looks like um, Violet gonna go maybe do some chopping and possibly take out this trapper. This trapper is so nice to take out. It gives you a nice tome, often a tome of experience as well, which is just so good. And meanwhile, Ted now knows where Violet is by process of elimination, and uh, it looks like he's actually worked out where, um, at least one of the two places where Violet's likely to be creeping. He scouts this place first, because obviously once you have that grunt out, it's pretty easy to uh, go and uh, do some creeping there. And and that gives you a very, actually a pretty big chunk of experience. Whereas uh, creeping this out looks like no tome of experience, unfortunately for um, Violet, and so uh, he will be able to do some shopping a bit, actually a bit bad timing on this food lunch. No textile from Violet either, uh, he's going to need to get that started pretty soon, you can see Ted has already started his, and uh, putting up this new Rubian Tower, no base block yet, because he's still only on one ziggurat, though certainly his second ziggurat will go right there, and it looks like uh, this uh, shopping is now dead, Ted finally scouting, ooh, looks like he went for that coil on that Blademaster, but the Blademaster ran just out of um, sight, just a bit too late, and it looks like actually one um, pig getting in the way, and uh, slowing down Violet a bit, who's now going for these accolades, actually dust being used, and a coil being used to go get rid of the um, any sort of healing, and Ted now putting up that cigarette just in time, and it, ooh, looks like, looks like that one scouting accolade was taken down by the uh, Grunt and the uh, Blademaster, but that's not too big a loss, it actually means that Ted can bring up some skeletons now, rather than having to run a bit further back to that graveyard, and uh, that's possibly going to help him taking out this grunt, although bear in mind he doesn't have any aura, he doesn't have any experience yet, and he has chosen the coil, so it's going to take him a while to get that grunt kill. I don't think it's worth it at this point, I think it's better just to try and stay on to um, Violet, it's often for doing too much creeping, and it looks like another coil going off there, going to take down this one P on for a bit of experience, finally. I'm a bit surprised actually that Ted used that coil, if he was at full mana I sort of would have understood it, but uh, he could have just set the skulls in to attack the I'm not 100% sure why he did that. Maybe he really wanted that quick skeleton. Oh, that's interesting play there by Ted. Uh, he decided that he'd uh, uh, he's going to waste that mana so he could get those extra skeletons so he could creep this camp out earlier. I do actually like that because, as I was saying, actually, I didn't understand the use of that um, coil, but that does make a bit more sense, I suppose. Got him that kill a bit quicker, but it means he can't do this creep jacking that he wanted to do. Nice cancel on one salve there on that blade master. Actually gets the other one on the grunt as well. Really nice use of skeletons there. And uh, Ted or uh, Violet now caught without any salves, and uh, Ted now with his first fiend in tier two, uh, rapidly on the way, very nearly done. You know, Violet is a bit behind. He did actually start his must have been just after I was looking at his face uh, last, because he 
didn't have a turn for a ver for a quite a long time actually. But his Blade Master now going to be coming in with a um, Clarity being used, so he's not going to attack that fiend because he just wants to keep that uh, Clarity going for as long as possible. And he doesn't know uh, where the uh, Death Knight is. If that Death Knight could save him, then it would all be for naught. And it looks like the skeleton's actually running ahead of the really damaged grunt. That's a bit surprising. Maybe he's just going to try and run in here, try and do a bit of har harassment to. Uh, Peons on the gold line, something like that. So, some of that sort of classic Ted play. There's <laughs> some pig actually getting in the way of everyone today. And uh, yeah, it looks like there. Ted going to be doing a bit of damage here. And you can see uh, lots of actually, ooh, lots of um, peons being brought into those burrows to quickly dispatch those skeletons. And it looks like Ted coming in yet again, trying to do a bit more harassment here. And uh, that's just um, really how Ted likes to play this uh, matchup now. Is he just constantly stays on this orc, uh, makes sure that he can't do too much creeping, stops him from getting that quick level 3 on his blade master, which means that he um, needs, he, it takes him a bit longer to creep up his second hero as well, probably the shadow hunter, but certainly against fiends, a uh, torrent chieftain is viable, and that pig finally being taken down by Ted, although he's not using it for a skeleton, oh no, he's coming back, yeah, there he uses it for a skeleton there, very um, uh, standard play there by Ted, and it looks like we are seeing a shadow hunter second as well as a bestiary and a spirit lodge coming out for a uh, violet who's doing this is one of the ways you can play uh, this matchup uh, you can sort of go with just one bestiary and quick text to tier 3 you can go for two bestiaries uh, you can go for a bestiary and continue to produce good grunts and then eventually um, headhunters and berserkers I mean you have a whole bunch of choices uh, it's quite nice because you can actually play a bit reactionary to how the undead is playing we can see Ted has put up one slaughterhouse here so uh, and uh, he's going for tier 3 so we might see some um, destroyers maybe late game or we could just see Ted's sort of classic lots of fiends, uh, lich with an orb, death knight, preferably level 3, and then um, go for some sort of push. Uh, we even occasionally saw him do some tower pushes, although that certainly is much less common. Although I ha we have seen him do it on, I think I actually cast a game where he did that on this map. I uh, can't remember if he won or not actually, but it looks like uh, you can see that because Ted has been doing so much harassment, the shadow hunter can't creep on his own, which is really what Violet wants at this point, but it, uh, ooh, Boots across the last, nice there for that Blade Master. Gotta get um get him a whole bunch of extra agility, attack speed, and armor for his Blade Master. Just so useful in this Blade Master. You can see as soon as he hits level three, he wants to get out of there so that he doesn't sap any more experience. And uh, looks like Ted actually gonna come in with a couple of skeletons, but and uh, might scout this out. Maybe could be able to cancel a couple salves yet again. The Shadow Hunter though still level one, and uh, Violet now desperately trying to find out where Ted is, or is Ted just actually capping in his base, getting a bunch of mana back. I guess he just doesn't want to fight before he has his good army. He knows that any creeping uh, could quite easily be creeped back and he could take a lot more damage. So uh, this is actually one of those few situations in which uh, camping in your base is actually a pretty good idea. And uh, looks like uh, as soon as Ted moves out, Violet's right on top of him. Uh, good to scout it out? Yes, he does scout it out. And uh, d Ted does still have one charge on the dust. So, ooh, actually, no, that Blade Master reveals himself up momentarily. So uh, Ted's going to be very, very suspicious. And I'll be going to use the dust before he kills the rock column. Because that's just such an important uh, kill t to get. Especially now that Lich is back out. You want to get the, um, you want to get the, ooh, actually, there's the dust there. You want to get the Nova as well as Frost Armor. And uh, actually, Coil going off on that, uh, death, on that Blade Master as well. Because the Death Knight has a fair bit of mana. Though certainly, he wasn't at full mana before. And Ted does get that kill. Picks up on one mana stealing, not brilliant though. I guess it's already against the yeah, Shadow Hunter. Meanwhile, Shadow Hunter has hit level two, but not really doing much creeping. Finally, getting back into it. it looks like uh, wants the Violet wants the Blade Master back to do the creeping a bit more quickly and a bit more safely. But Ted, meanwhile, going up here, going to do some creeping at this camp probably. Uh, yeah, looks like it. And uh, Violet, meanwhile, just going to finish off. Ooh, total experience and remove major plus six. Excellent, excellent items here for Violet. Uh, that obviously, that extra mana is just so useful. And ooh, a sapper being picked up. Do we have a scroll of speed? Yes, we do have a scroll of speed. I imagine I'll use a scroll of speed. Try and pick off these uh, two Ziggurats. Actually, he'll try for these two, but I'm not. But uh, whether or not to actually be able to make it, we'll have to see because of the slowing effects of that Nerubian Tower and the um, Black Citadel. But it looks like the sapper comes in, does get those two Ziggurats. There's a lot of damage to a third, and that's just so bad for Ted. And this is. Uh, Ted Minol has just been creeping straight right up there. Does TP in, going to get two grunt kills by the looks of things, and that's not going to pay for uh, the uh, or, or pays for the TP. Doesn't pay for the um, lost cigarettes, although certainly sappers do have quite a high cost in and of themselves. But really, the big sort of unseen cost now is Ted is now supply capped. So Violet knows he has a bit of um, free time to do whatever he likes. He can um, pump up a big army and then push as soon as Ted finishes his cigarettes. Uh, Violet will know he has a much bigger army because Ted was supply is currently supply capped. Or he could maybe try to go for an expansion, knowing that Ted can't just mass up an army immediately. But I 
think yeah, he would have had to have started his expansion by now. We know Violet uh, looks like he's actually continuing to try and take down these uh, Ziggurats, but won't be successful. And has picked up a um, Headhunter first. Yeah, he picked up one Headhunter. No Tier 3 yet, so no Berserker training. Actually getting a lot more Headhunters as well. So clearly very worried about the potential for um, Destroyers, which certainly are quite um, quite common in this matchup. Especially when, you're, when, especially when the Orc has got a... Um, a spirit walker under two, because obviously that spirit link is so so useful. Even against Coil Nova, it's really useful. But as soon as you can dispel it like that, it just becomes so much less uh, useful. And the destroyer now um, managing to get a whole bunch of um, spirit links absorbed. But the spade master getting a nice critical strike, although losing one raider. But the coda comes and actually eats a coda that's a bit um, sloppy. But Ted has picked up a tinker third, which actually is uh, quite indicative that he was planning on going. Or I'm not sure because often you do this when you want to go banshees. There's a bit of a weird choice. I mean, oh, it looks like this uh, Spirit Walker being saved at the last second. Oh no, the Destroyer gets a hit there. Very, very nice uh, play there by Ted. And another Spirit Walker tries to save itself, and uh, luckily the Destroyer isn't going to chase after it. The, the Destroyer actually being focused down now by all these Headhunters. And uh, Ted now actually doing a good job of keeping this Tinker alive. And bear in mind, he can't heal it, but he can use his Frost Armor to try and keep it uh, to try and. Uh, keep the Blade Master off it for as long as possible. This Coda be still at full health. Nice call coming in there by Ted to uh, keep that one Lich alive, but the, but the um, Fiends are now going down because they're in such a bad position. Ooh, actually Violet had a good um, block there with that Spirit Walker, but unfortunately uh, lost it, and the Spirit Walker now can come out of Ethereal form when the cooldown runs out, and uh, he'll be at good health, and meanwhile this um, Coda Beast really needs to be focused on. There, he, there Ted goes. Finally uh, goes for the kill, and it looks like he is going to get it. And uh, nice use of sort of all, all kinds of things actually in this round there. A couple um, Clockwork Goblins, a couple Skeletons, and the uh, Death Knight. But looks like another Fiend going to go down for Ted. This is just so bad. But it looks like he's managed to clean up most of Violet's army. Violet now very much on the run, although this Tinker getting a bit aggressive. He can't be healed. He needs to run. And this Tinker now being ensnared, even though he has been Frost Armor. Critical Strike comes in and gets the kill there for Violet. And uh, even though that was a low level Tinker, it's still just quite annoying and this Blade Master now leveling up to level 4 and this Lich actually now hitting on um, level 3 as well get ooh plus 5 armor this Lich has gone for level 2 Frost Armor before he's gone uh, instead of a level 2 um instead of level 2 Nova which is quite interesting but I guess it makes sense considering this Lich just needs to save life so badly gets Hex the Blade Master coming after it but nice block there by the Clockwork Goblin and uh, will Ted manage to keep it alive he doesn't have enough mana on his Death Knight he uses an Invuln pot though but I just don't see the long term plan for keeping this Lich alive Death Knight now almost level 4 if he could level up that'd be nice but the Lich does eventually go down and Violet doing a very nice job with just his two heroes here gonna need to run this Blade Master away although he does have the Invuln pot which will keep him in this battle a bit longer and now going for some more fiends Ted just needs to keep these fiends alive for just as long as possible because they have decent DPS but uh, against things like grunts and uh, raiders they just go down so quickly but you know a lot of peons now will be picked off as Violet Force to run his two heroes out of there and these peons obviously very very slow and the Death Knight does now hit level 4 and I wonder if we're going to be seeing a taverning back of that lich but and actually three statues out for Ted now so he's really going to have a good opportunity to produce it. ooh actually one getting ensnared here well he doesn't even turn back to save it he does finally but this is a bit late reaction decides not to save it instead uh, it's a I'm not sure that's the best choice. If he had turned back earlier, I think he could have saved it, or at least uh, done a lot of damage to the Blade Master for free. And I uh, mean, all the uh, Tinker now coming back, and yeah, the Lich being taverned back and immediately coiled there by Ted. Smart choice to keep that alive. But Hex now on the uh, Death Knight, who doesn't have any way of keeping himself alive beyond his uh, hit points and the uh, obviously healing effects. Oh, actually, he does have Death Pact at level 4. Actually, uh, I sort of forgotten that he had, uh, would, of course, have done that. Obviously, at level 4, it's so nice. But look at the, all these incinerators coming in for Violet, and then uh, Blade Master using a Wind Walk to get a bit of extra damage when the, the Shadow Hunter even getting a couple hits off and the, the Blade Master now really trying to catch up but looks like the Death Knight has managed to stay alive and the uh, one instead going off on that Death Knight just to slow down the rest of the army so it can't uh, they can't have the aura for as long so Violet can get out of here but Violet yet again on the run what a back and forth game we've had so far and uh, now that we only have two snatchers we're unlikely to see a destroyer maybe we'll see a destroyer if Ted wants to go for a push that's really sort of almost all in but at this point I mean uh, he should probably try and play it a bit slower than he actually is, but I guess he has his uh, he has his um all his heroes up, so he's sort of happy to push. But one critical strike comes in here, and this is why he, I think he needs to play it a bit slower. Uh, look, he uses another death pack, but he means he only has two um fiends left, and uh, this statue now is going to be focused down as well. I'm not just the best choice in this situation. 